Hey YouTube land, it's Tychondrus, welcoming you back to another action figure review. Now, just before I proceed, if you if my voice sounds a little off, it's because I'm down, down sick at the moment, so uh, it might sound a little off to you. I'm kind of down with a flu, cold, COVID thing again. So, trying to do something productive while I'm basically, I you know, doing nothing, as they say. So... Here is a review for the 40th anniversary of the Dungeons and Dragons. No, I'm not sure if it's 40th anniversary of the game. I think the game predates this. It's 40th anniversary of the cartoon series. And uh, this is the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon series. I think it was, uh, yeah, it would be the 80s when this was released. So that would work out with the timeline. So these are figures done by Hasbro. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole debacle about the Wizards of the Coast, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Hasbro thing. All I'll say about it is that it was pretty crap for what they did. And hopefully they will rectify it or they've tried to rectify it. Uh, but only time will tell from the backlash of how they went about it. But uh, if you want to know more about it, just look it up. But what I'm concentrating here is on the figures. So I picked up three of the figures. There was a two-pack set, which was an exclusive to, I want to say Target or Walmart. I'm not sure which. I think it's Target. Um, I don't have that. It was also available on the Hasbro Pulse site, but I don't think it's still available at the time of this recording. So I will have to try and pick it up at some point. And that came with the Dungeon Master and the main villain guy, which I can't remember his name. But they say they, this tree figure set or not three figure set but these three individual figures are for the first of the group or the uh, the gang from this so you got hank the ranger bobby and uni bobby is the barbarian and then you have diana who is the acrobat the acrobat isn't a class that they really have much anymore they still have ranger as a default class and barbarian as a default class probably the closest to acrobat you have now would be the monk uh which would be like doing monk feats and stuff like that the acrobat was i believe like it would have been a specialized character set but they all come on this red windowless packaging this is the new plastic free packaging there is a qr code on the side of these and then it actually has a small write-up for each character on the side. It says, Diana is known for her acrobatic talents and carries a javelin that can be launched, that can launch her high into the air. And then it's just repeated in several languages along the side. On the back of the box, it just showcases the figure and the accessories she comes with. What's interesting to note, oh yeah, and on the side of the box, there's an art, um, the artwork for the character from... I don't know if it's pulled directly from the cartoon, but it is based on her cartoon appearance. And if I just grab the other boxes, you have the one for Bobby, which is Bobby the Barbarian and his sidekick Uni the Unicorn are always ready for battle, the forces of evil. And then you have an image of the figure, Im cartoon image on the side of the box, image of what's included on the back of the box, and again, image of the cartoon panel stuff on the side. And then for Hank, is is the serving as the leader and eldest of the group is Hank. Rain, the ranger uses a bow and arrow as his weapon, defeating dragons and enemies of the group's quests. So, and then again, same thing. You have image of Hank on the back of the box with its accessories and just images from the uh, images from the cartoon on the front so i know a lot of people have had issues with the hank figure i haven't seen anyone having too much issues with the other two but hank seems to be the main culprit with some qc issues i know one of the other reviewers who do action figure reviews pixel dan ended up with two versions of hank and both had the same issue where this hand snapped when he was trying to articulate it and rotate it uh my one seems to be okay for the most part now he does have a boot swivel but on his 
right leg it's very stuck so i'm not going to force it in case i do have a qc qc issue where it breaks but the rest of his joints like the minute i got him out of the box he went straight in for a dip of hot water you can see in here where on his left elbow where the actual plastic for the elbow joint actually went over the joint so when he moved it it actually started moving that excess plastic off it it's like flashing basically over it. so if that was any tighter it would have frozen the joint in place but he doesn't seem to have that issue but that's beside the point we'll go on about their accessories first <clears throat> excuse me and we'll go on, we'll go through the figures then so each figure which is kind of cool comes with a dice so for hank he came with the d8 so it's dungeons and dragons d8 it would have been nice if they had the dnd logo on the one mark usually on the Dungeons and Dragons dice they used to, or a specific set. This there, it's a nicely coloured set. It's done similar to the kind of packaging with the kind of reds and blacks. It would have been even nicer if the twenty. We'll find it on the D twenty. The D twenty comes with Diana. It would have been nice if the twenty or the one had the D and D logo on it. Same with the D twelve. You had a D twelve with Bobby, and they were all just nicely as any other dice does. But they're, they are nice. Um, when the other figures come out, I think there is two dice with the two pack as well. But when the other figures from the group, core group of characters come out, they should have the rest of the dice. Create a full set of d, &D dice for yourself. Which is quite nice. So, we'll start with Hank. Hank comes with two accessories. He comes with this charged up version of his bow. He comes with a regular bow. Now, it's, it is worth noting that the bow doesn't have a string on it makes it easier for him to hold it anyway but i think it's supposed to be a magical bow anyway so when he does charge it it actually creates the arrow and the string when he pulls it back because it's a magical bow as you can see by this uh kind of blast effect style uh version of it so the whole bow kind of glows and is translucent and it will it doesn't actually fire the arrow it's you know all part of one piece same thing with diana she comes with her quarterstaff, or javelin, as they call it. And then she has a powered-up version of it where it's kind of doing a swoosh effect. So it has, like, a spinning effect on it. So you have that. Bobby doesn't actually come with any kind of spe special effect style accessory. Mainly because he comes with Uni, I would imagine. But he does come with his Barbarian Club, which is what he used on the show. And he comes with Uni, who is fairly nicely sculpted but is it has just a single point of articulation which is the neck joint so you can move her head left and right it's kind of a interesting cartoony it almost looks like a my little pony unicorn basically is the best way to describe boonie i vaguely remember the show <coughs> um but uh, i don't remember i remember watching a couple of episodes of the show but i never really got into it as a kid but um, I do know that it did have a big strong following, so people quite enjoyed it. I just I think what really put it put me off it was the the dungeon master, and it just looked like a weird little toad creature. So I was never a big fan of it, and I didn't see, you generally see much of the creatures in the episodes that I saw. But uh, it is what it is. So for height wise, we'll bring in tape measure. We'll sand them all together. We'll do a tape, measuring tape. So I believe Hank is the tallest of them. Just standing around the six inches. Bobby is the smallest because he is the youngest of the group. Uh, he is to the top of his horned helmet. He's just around five inches. But like if he didn't have the helmet on him, he'd be way smaller. And then Diana is just a little hair under six. So both Hank and Diana kind of stand similar heights. Oh, and Uni as well is probably around the two, three. And tip of the horn is probably the highest point, which is three inches. So you do get a bit of height on Uni for the, from the horn. The detailing of the figures look pretty nice. Um, Hank here has his kind of ranger outfit with the kind of studs on it. It looks kind of, you know, Robin Hood-esque style um medieval outfit which is kind of cool 
he does have articulation this piece neck piece is it is a separate piece but it is glued onto the back of the figure his head does turn left and right does have up and down um it is a double joint so there is a base joint at the base of the neck and base at the base of the head so it does have that joint he can move left right up down his shoulders can go out that much there is a cut on the side of his pauldron that gives him that range of movement and the same with it like the front he can move his arms forward he can move him back now it is no worth noting that this will get in the way if you want to do a 360 so it doesn't really do that he does have those single joint elbows like i pointed out he does have a swivel and a hinge if i remember correctly uh, yes he does have a hinge on the wrist it's not the biggest hinge because his cuff actually goes over it he does have one grip hand he doesn't have and none of them have any alternate hands they all have come with their standard hands he does have a waist swivel it's a bit loose on mine but i don't mind that uh he does have leg articulation he can kick forward his skirt piece is that slightly rubbery piece as well so it and it has a split for him to kick forward with and can move back he does have double jointed knees which are very very tight especially on my one so he does have the double jointed knees as i mentioned he does have a boot swivel he does have rocker ankles and there is peg holes on the bottom of each foot so his uniform is very reminiscent of as i said robin hood or that kind of era the kind of medieval era he does hold his bow quite nicely well sort of nicely you have to get in the right grip but he will hold it if you need him to and he stands if i straighten out his ankle he stands reasonably well for bobby then as i said i did go through the articulation on uni he comes with his club he has one kind of gra grass hand for the club it's really big and it does make him top heavy with it so you kind of have to either rest it on his shoulder so he doesn't have the falling over effect or on the way they have it in the box it's at ground height so he's kind of holding it on his foot kind of type thing so you can do that he does have the same rocker thing and the waist he has a head that can go forward and back or 360 he doesn't have the double jointed neck like um hank does his arms can go up that much can rotate all the way around because he's not hindered by his harness piece he does have single jointed elbows which get a good over 90 degree bend his hands are on swivels and they do have an articulation joint his legs can kick forward now he does have the softer he does have the slit for the um waist joint but this waist joint is very solid so you can't really kick forward too much on it he does have double jointed knees he does have the boot swivel and he does have the big chunky ankle joints because his feet are actually very small so he has a very large ankle joint forward and back and a rocker so he does have some nice articulation points his harness piece does appear to be a one piece part so the only way to take it off would be to kind of completely take him apart to actually take it off if you wanted to for customization but he is quite nice and he does have the two peg holes let's get him to stand there in the background his hat isn't a separate piece either it is part of his head sculpt that is glued in place so i would surmise if you were to take the hat off his head and be left with a kind of weird bowl cut around his hair line where it would attach onto it and then for diana she does have two grip hands so she can hold her staff two-handed if you want her to so if i just get her to hold it like that you can get her to hold a quarter staff javelin it doesn't to me it doesn't look like a javelin as far as i remember javelins kind of look a bit like a spear kind of like lady j's javelins this looks more like a quarter, a quarter staff or a bow bow staff kind of thing but she does come with that she can hold it two-handed you can hold it in one hand if you want it's a bit loose because this is just a long straight piece of plastic so if her hand is anyway overstretched a little bit it'll just slide right through she can hold both sides of it 
or both versions. So you can hold the swishy one if you want. Put it on her hands. You can hold both versions of her staff and she can look in the direction she's looking at. Again, <clears throat> she does have a swivel on the head and a neck joint. You can just see it underneath the base of the neck. There's actually a hinge. So she can look down quite a bit. She can look up quite a bit, but not as much as down. Her head's on the swivel. Arm can move up that much. She can rotate all the way around. Again, not hindered by her articulation. She's the only one to have an upper diaphragm joint. She doesn't have a lower joint. Uh, she has single jointed elbows, just like all the rest of them, which do get just around a 90 degree bend. She has wrist swivel and hinges. You can see they're in and out hinges. She does have similar kind of furry loin cloth as Bobby does. It Again, doesn't really move out of the way, just like Bobby's. Her legs can do the splits. And she can have, she has the double jointed knees. She also has the boot sole. Again, it's very tight on one leg. So, and then she has the same kind of rocker ankle joints as the rest of them and peg holes on the bottom of her feet. Paint apps wise, they're not too bad. If I just spin around, she has paint apps all the way around there and just haven't had any issue with paint apps. She looks pretty good. Same with the other figures. I haven't had any kind of blotches or splotches with their paint apps on any of the figures. They seem to be fairly clean. There's not actually a lot of paint apps on them, to be fair. I mean, most of their equipment and stuff are done in the color plastic that they need to be. With the exception of Hank, he has the studs painted. Most of the rest of that stuff is just kind of his plastic. The green is a lighter plastic. I don't know if that's a separate. The, yeah, the neck piece is actually painted as well. That's the only green that is painted for that dark, type of dark green. The rest of it is all the plastic color. So his legs and arms are actual that color plastic. Uh, similar with uh, Diana. Her main paint apps are the gold. The plastic then is, I think her base plastic for her waist is her skin tone, or the main body is her skin tone, and then the brown is uh, painted on as well. So overall, they're not too bad figures. <coughs> Ugh, they're not that bad figures. I do enjoy them. Uh, hopefully I can get the rest of the wave, and there is a wave too coming with the rest of the figures, which should include Presto, which is the magician, the other, I think it's the rogue, which I can't remember her name, and the paladin kind of, it was a, sh a cavalier guy, which I can't remember his name either. There's three more characters that create the full group. And then hopefully they might do a couple of bad guys or something along those lines. It might be something like just generic uh, bad guys that they had on the show or something along those lines are recurring characters. So. There you go guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick video review for this Dungeons and Dragons 40th anniversary cartoon line by Hasbro. And as always, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Cheers guys.